Many of us have been playing this game for over three years now. And what we just know about this game is like we defeat barbarians, we defeat other players, we rally, we defend, we collect these commanders in here. Some of these commanders that are historical figure. But many of us kind of not realize that whenever we load the screen, you guys have seen, there is Lilith and Lego games. Today, I discovered, actually I discovered this for a while back now. I discovered who is the actual creator of Lilith games. So I found this really great video on YouTube and it talks about the game that we love, the game that we play, the game that we are so obsessed about, Rise of Kingdoms, Lilith Games. And um, thank you to Josh for making this video for us and I want to you know, watch this with you guys. Wang is perhaps the most famous. He is pretty young, honestly, but I think this video is a little bit older and I think he was born in, I think what he said here is 1987. So he's a few years older than me. So he's probably in the thirties now. Now, what I like about this is that, hey, me and the CEO of Lilith Games, we have the same surname because as you can see in here, it says Wang, which is, I think it translates to King, right? Anyway, my last name is also Wang, but his name is Sinwen which is mine is sure Ming, which is kind of like some similarities on the letters there with the sin. All right. You know, I like this because I feel like there is a connection already. Like we have the same last name, right? We could be like a brother from a lot really long distance or a cousin or whatever, but very interesting. Very interesting. And he also got glasses. Where the heck is my glasses? Okay. No worry. Don't worry. Famous young gaming entrepreneur in China right now. Wow, mm. he may look like the boy next door. Oh wait, he also has glasses. Nothing special now. <laughs> or he's a bit of a maverick. A bit of he is a bit of a maverick. Maverick sounds like a very familiar name. Maverick. Maybe it's a hint. Uh, go big or go home kind of guy. Yeah, go big or go home. home. Yes, time, definitely. Also, quick to point out that he's not some simple dream chaser, but mm. he's that's good. A pragmatist. Wang said his company is not driven by original aspirations, nor personal sentiments, nor idealism. Okay. And the context in which he said this is important because the term was just catching on at the time. Later, President Xi Jinping even turned it into a slogan. So yeah. Wang nice. Not wow. Not about the trend. Anyway, Wang sort of came out of nowhere and made a game which became the first national hit on the mobile platform. And that led Tencent and the like to fully realize the potential of mobile games. Mm. Now his company is arguably the most internationally successful Chinese gaming startup. Wait, did you guys hear that? This is in 2016. Wow. So the Lit Games is internationally, you said one of the best like startups, right? Let, let, let me hear, let me listen to that again. That Tencent and the like to fully realize the potential of mobile games. That was really now good. His company is arguably the most internationally successful Chinese gaming startup internationally game, that's a key word games on the map was dota. rise of dota legends wait wait the game the rise of dota legends yeah that's in that's interesting i've never seen this game i love dota growing up and playing it but it's kind of like rise of kingdoms is pretty close in which put Lilith games on the map was dota legends it was the number one mm. mobile game in 20 oh this looked like a guy from afk arena 14 it made 311 million Oh, this is um, this is uh, the guy who has like a lot of uh, in Dota where you can change the skill. I forgot uh, that you can change like different orbs and stuff. I forgot what it is. That year, which was unprecedented. The game also got Lilith Games into a massive lawsuit. Ooh, with that's and tough. Blizzard over copyright. Today, Lilith Games is best known for titles such as Rise of Kingdoms, Yeah, AK Arena, and uh -huh. Conquest. These games are often found within the top ten games in many countries at any given time. 
Rise of Kingdoms itself made Woo! 477 million dollars. 477 million alone in 2019. Damn, I've contributed onto that then. Maybe just like 0.0000000001%. In 2019 alone. Born in 1987, Wong graduated. 1987, 1987. So, um, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92. So Wong uh, is only about five years older than me. So he's a little bit of a older brother to me, huh? Nanjing University in 2009. Nanjing. And joined Tencent to work on an MMO game. All right. So his four years stint at Tencent. Wang later described the experience as unsatisfactory. I once worked at Tencent for almost four years, but I really did terribly there. I did not lead anybody, had no management experience, and the year before I left the company, I Ooh. got a C in my performance review, which is tantamount to being asked to leave. You know what? I kind of feel where he is at at that stage of life because that's what kind of like I felt with my job. Um, you know. I work for biotech and I just felt like I wasn't really moving up. I wasn't really doing anything. I was trying to, I want to try something new, something different. So now I'm trying to do this YouTube thing and I'm trying to do other stuff as well. But I feel him right here. You know, you want to excel, you want to succeed. And I love that he has gone through this because this is everything that is like life experience for him. My God. But this subpar experience at Tencent eventually got him considered making it on his own. Mm, smart guy. Games were about to take off, so Wong he took a big risk. Tencent, teamed up with a few co-workers who were also frustrated by the low They don't pay us enough and anyway. Yeah. Doing a mobile game called Crazy Submarine. The game is essentially about bombing. I don't know this game either. Guess what? It bombed. Hmm. It made only fifty U.S. dollars. Fifty dollars. Imagine that. Fifty dollars. Oh boy, from fifty bucks to four hundred and seventy-seven million. Wong was Ooh. devastated by the failure. Despite the setback. He knew what that a success. His own company was the right thing to do. So Wang left Tencent and started Lulut okay. Games in 2013. Wow, a little sneak peek Thank to Lulut Games. He already had an idea. He remembered this game on the PSP Patapon, which Patapon. he was obsessed with in college. Oh, I've that seen game this. Wang the epiphany that a side-scrolling I've, I've played this game. game could actually be fun. Wang mm -hmm. then went ahead and brought that gameplay mechanic to mobile. He created Dota Legends with characters effectively copied from Dota. Dota Legends. Yeah, Ogre Magi. Um, man, I don't. Med is that Medusa? Uh, Ezalor. Man. Then exploded, Phoenix? topping the download charts in many countries. The game. Oh, the game ended up making 5 billion yen, which is 400. Oh, sorry, 743 million dollars. Bro, this guy is a legend. He is. Ended up making 5 wow. billion yuan. According to Wang, for him to make that much is crazy. With Dota Legends, wow. Traditional gaming companies like Tencent and NetEase were still putting most of their money mm. on PC games. He added that it was Dota Legends that had awakened Tencent and NetEase with respect to mobile games. So what did they say? What, sorry, what he said is that basically Wang is the one who pioneered these mobile games, and these big companies looked at what he. I was able to accomplish. Wow, you know, taking a risk into trying something that nobody does is something that is amazing because you just don't know what is the possibility of an outcome if you don't try it, which he did. He took that risk. He took this, and man, Rise of Kingdoms, you know, absolutely one of the best games I've ever played in mobile. In fact, Dota Legends got so popular that Western companies started copying it. Most wow. notably, Heroes Charge, a Dota Legends clone, gained traction Ooh. in North America. Heroes Charge. And even spent $2.25 million on a Super Bowl ad. Wow, two point wait, two point two five on the ads? Jesus. This game then filed a lawsuit against Yukul, the developer mm. of Heroes Charge. But Dota Legends had its own share of legal trouble. Given Dota was a custom game within Warcraft, yeah, yeah. Blizzard, NetEase, and Valve Corp took Lilith Games yeah, to It's a Blizzard court. game, right? The pressure eventually got to Wong, and the company relented to rebrand the game into Soul Hunters. Ah. Before the rebranding, the lawsuit had already gotten Dota Legends banned from the App Store. Damn, okay. Having back outsized profit from the game, Wang and his team went to work. Lilith Games came up with Art of Conquest, AFK Arena, and Rise of Kingdoms. So if you guys don't know, you know, Rise of Kingdoms wasn't always Rise of Kingdoms. It used to be Rise of Civilization. But I think without these experience that Wang is able to experience, he might not have been able to succeed here with Rise of Kingdoms. With 
having that lawsuit probably from that Dota Legends was actually a good thing because it made him learn in the process of that. Man, he was young. It was like about, I mean, he's younger than my age. And during that time, he was so already successful. Man, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> These are very successful and very innovative. It, it, it is very successful. AFK Arena, I played this very successful this game as well. They are arguably more successful in the West than they are in China. Yeah. Which, thanks partly to how is this a market player? How savvy they are in promoting themselves overseas. As things stand, Lilith Games is a company just a tier below the giants, such as. Oh, that's a uh, Rage Shadow. Uh. Harkening back to what was said about Wang's pragmatism, he said he was often perceived as this person who operated by personal feeling, and mm -hmm. thus his products are very polished and innovative. It is, it is, it is. But one thing I like about that is that the personal personal feeling about it, because we know in Rise of Kingdoms the game is so personal, right? You get attacked, you message the person like, "What the? Fire? Why did you attack me?" You know, something like that. It's too personal. And I love it. I love the point of it. I've even made videos about people finding best friends in Rise of Kingdoms. Finding people that they end up dating, marrying even. Like, how crazy is that? People found spouse. Found a fiance in the game of Rise of Kingdoms. That's absolutely crazy. What Wang is able to create is not just a game, but it's a community. And it... It's just basically a good connection. I still haven't found my mate yet. So I'm just, I'm, Wang, I'm still waiting. I'm waiting, bro. When do I find my soulmate in the game? Wang repeatedly stressed that that wasn't his MO. Instead, oh, it's not Wang your MO. Okay. Company had to innovate because yeah. that was the only but only it's way. not your MO, but it was really good though. His company could compete with incumbents. As far as his management philosophy goes, in hmm. 2015, Wang said to pass probation at his company, New recruits have to finish reading the following books. Oh, wow. The Lean Startup, Zero to One, Insanely Simple, and The Fifth Discipline. I wonder if he's still implying all of these. Like, I'm curious if Rusty Leo and Asya, who is our, um, uh, what is that called, PR in Rise of Kingdoms, if they had to read all those four books. I'm very curious. As a young boy in the sector, he used to sneer at the concept of flat management, but now he's come to acquire an appreciation for it. The most important lesson he said is that you should get information from everybody, but you can only discuss discussions with few people. Wow, On top smart. Of that, Wang also said paying attention to competitors' products and paying top dollars for top talents are the two crucial things. Mm, pay your stars. Mm. Startups must do to gain an edge. Here are a few other additional key concepts Wang likes to highlight. Differentiation or die. Innovation Differentiation. Comes from personal experience. Create a demo fast and fail fast. Virality trumps user retention. Products must be simple. Don't and we, we've seen that in Rise of Kingdoms. The product is definitely simple, right? It's absolutely insane. Like, I didn't really have any issue when I played that game. When I play other games, I have to figure out, oh, how this is so difficult. Like, I don't want to play it so difficult. But Rise of Kingdoms, when I played and downloaded it, it was absolutely easy. It was wonderful. Use tactical diligence to cover up mm -hmm. strategic laziness. Oh, oh I like that. Uh, don't use tactical diligence to cover up strategic to laziness. Video, I think it's good to shed some light on a mental exercise, which Wang used to like to do with himself. To keep Ooh, himself mental alive. exercise. He said that every now and then we ought to tear out a piece of paper, find a quiet place, and literally write out every piece of thought <laughs> on our mind. The key is not to filter any thought whatsoever. Not even thoughts which may be scary to confront, such as maybe we don't even love our partners. That sort of thing. He said that this is an important exercise because he believes only 10% of our thoughts are ones we're conscious of. Obviously, this is a difficult exercise, and he said that to complete this exercise... Man, I, I love the story about this dude. You know, I mean, he's just so much like... He's on a different level of success and amazingness compared to, like, me. Um... It's just amazing. I mean, he's so young when he started doing this, taking that risk. And I guess that should empower the, the younger generations, like maybe in my age as well, because I guess we're still, you know, not in the 30s yet, is to that, you know, take the risk and try something that is, you know, different and approach it the way has, you know, he has done. And I like it. You know, he's a younger guy and is the sector of and very successful gaming, uh, what he have built. Like, I think 
right now, it, it's um, Lilith Games is a small giant. It's probably not as big as Tencent yet, but I think it's growing to that point. It takes a while to become like the biggest, right? But I think Lilith Games really have a future into this gaming sector. I mean, they've already generated a lot of revenue, but I think it's that they have a future into where becoming the number one. Exercise, you must destroy this piece of paper. As long as, as long as um, the leadership within the company remains, you know, with their focus, I think it will be definitely be a number one uh, company in the gaming sector, especially in, in China. One I would thing, say, but he already said that it's pretty much dominates, right? You know that uh, no in it, it dominates in the uh, Western sector, right? So we do know. I mean, even in my YouTube channel, like people that are watching, right, majority is like in the Western sector as well. But we also have some Asian sectors as well. Right? Majority, I think. I think when we think about West. Typically, it's the United States. I guess for me, when I think about West, it's United States. Will ever see this? And second, you two feel free to return to this exercise again the next time. Mm. So yeah, that's a story of Wang Xingwen. I hope you guys enjoy it. Man, that's amazing. Learning about the CEO of the game that we play, Rise of Kingdoms. Really, thank you, Josh, for sharing the story of Wang Xingwen. It's amazing, right? Guys, did you guys know about Wang Xingwen or not? Let me know in the comment section below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. I will see you again next time.